Coming up at 11, a portion of Governor Bashir's newly proposed budget plan includes investing in the state's juvenile justice system. We will explain more about its importance coming up. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Olivia Calfi. Governor Bashir wants to invest in the state's juvenile justice system. During his proposed budget this week, he announced his plan. It includes two female-only juvenile detention centers. One of those would be in Lexington. His proposal would also fund the renovation of the Jefferson County Youth Detention Center. Julia Sandor spoke to advocates and government leaders about the importance of making changes in the system. And to understand where we are, I think you have to understand a, a little bit of the history. And frankly, the Department of Juvenile Justice was under-resourced and probably neglected for many years. Secretary of the Justice and Public Safety Cabinet, Carrie Harvey, says they've come a long way in the last few years when it comes to juvenile detention centers. But Kevin Mensch with the ACLU of Kentucky says they still have many concerns. The list is nearly too long to count. We understand that the facilities are understaffed. Uh, the people who work there are oftentimes undertrained. Children are held on lockdown for 24 hours a day. Uh, food has been withheld as a punitive measure. Medicine has been withheld as a punitive measure. Religious practice has been withheld as a punitive measure. Kids don't have access to mental health treatment, oftentimes lack of access to education uh, and kids that are in mental distress uh, have been accused of faking it, faking illnesses. Mensch says generally they believe children would likely be better off at their home and in their community, getting the access to resources they need. And Secretary Harvey agrees, saying the governor's proposed budget could help in the long run. I think we're going to end up with a, a very good product. And, and the governor's budget does things like, you know, we don't focus just on detention. We focus on alternatives to detention because in every case where we can keep a juvenile out of detention and still account for public safety, we want to do that. And they say they'll continue to work with the General Assembly this upcoming session. Julia Sandor, WKYT. Bashir's budget, budget proposals also lay out $3.9 million each year to add about 450 additional placements so youth can be diverted from detention centers through programs like home detention. Deputies with the Whitley County Sheriff's Office say one man is facing charges after a woman showed up at the hospital with a gunshot wound. Deputies say the woman was dropped off at Baptist Health Corbin. She reportedly said she did not know who shot her. After investigating her home, deputies say they found evidence that 25-year-old Lucas Bargo shot her during an argument. Bargo also lived at the home. A gun was found at the home and Bargo was charged with assault. We are tracking some more dry and cool weather as we go into your Wednesday evening. And this is all thanks to an upper level ridge or an area of high pressure. And as you can see, that high pressure system continues to sit over the region this evening. Also into your Thursday and Friday, so more dry weather is on the way. But we are tracking a few changes as we go into this weekend. But this evening, once again, we are cold. So a copy and paste forecast continues down to 29 for London, 32 in Hazard and 38 over in Pikeville. So once again, we are cold and low temperatures fall into the upper 20s and lower 30s as you wake up on Thursday. That dry trend also continues overnight and more dry weather on the way on Thursday as once again high pressure is the name of the game and those temperatures top out close to average on Thursday in the upper 40s and lower 50s. Upper 50s on Friday and possibly some 60s by Christmas Eve, also Christmas Day. So we are well above average. Also tracking some more widespread rain by Christmas Day as well. Those details coming up in just a few minutes. It's Olivia. All right, thank you, Cameron. An Eastern Kentucky health care provider has added one more location in another county. Primary Care Centers of Eastern Kentucky now has a new location in Letcher County. Staff say they plan to provide more efficient health care to the area. Nurse practitioner Catherine Cornett, who is from the area, says she wants everyone to feel comfortable in their office. I, I hope they feel the family environment since I'm from this area and I hope to provide just casual, laid back, 
urgent, sick type of care. Primary care is located near Pine Mountain Grill in Whitesburg. They are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Thankful Hearts Food Pantry is reaching out to people near Pike County this season, offering groceries and gifts to those in need. The pantry hosted its perishable foods giveaway today, filling needs and trunks ahead of Christmas. Pantry representatives say they see a growing need in their community and are continually blessed to help fill the gaps. Those who took advantage of the resources say they do not know how they would make it through without the pantry provisions this year, with some saying they are glad to have the help when they need it most. Um, the food banks and the giveaways are here to help us, um, to help everyone. So if you get in the hard times, don't feel ashamed to take um, to come to these giveaways and get the food and just help yourself or your family or if you know someone who needs help, come out and try to help them. Thankful Hearts also provided gifts to more than 800 kids this year and served hot meals to families in need. Pantry representatives say the work to serve their community is an all hands on deck project and they are always welcoming more volunteers and donors. The Perry County Conservation District and Kentucky Fish and Wildlife partner each year for a holiday recycling initiative. Starting on December 26th and going until January 15th, the Perry County Conservation District will help you recycle your live Christmas tree. And then as water levels rise, the trees will be put into public lakes as fish attractors for fishers. You can bring your recycled live Christmas trees and it's just so that you don't um, go dump them, throw them over the hill, use them, you know, we want to use them for something useful. Fugit adds that once collection begins, you can leave your tree in the grassy area of the Perry County Conservation District at 310 Morton Boulevard. The Wayne County Sheriff's Office held their annual Shop with a Deputy event yesterday. The event happened at the Walmart in Monticello. 33 children were there for the event and each child was given $150 to buy items for Christmas. Sheriff Tim Katrin thanked Walmart and everyone else who donated to help make the event possible. One canine in South Central Kentucky received a special gift this holiday season. The Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife's Canine Gambit recently received a special donation from Vested Interest in Canines Incorporated. It was a bullet and stab prof protective vest to ensure the utmost safety for Gambit. Conservation Officer Cody Berry is Gambit's partner in South Central Kentucky. He is one of three Labrador retrievers that joined the department in late 2022. Officials at animal shelters say they are seeing more dogs being brought in and they say it is in large part due to the economy. Adoptions have not been keeping pace with the number of animals coming in, creating bottlenecks. Shelter operators believe the influx of more animals is largely due to higher pet care cost and housing issues. Unfortunately, as we're seeing more and more animals entering our shelter, we're not seeing the same rate of animals leaving our shelter. Our adoption numbers have been down about five to nine percent year over year, but our stray numbers have increased about 40 percent. Shelter operators say the big challenge is dogs, especially large dogs that are entering at a rate that is not being sustained by adoption. And coming up on Mountain News at 11, just as many across the nation are beginning to travel for the holidays, health officials are urging Americans to get ready for respiratory illness season. I'll tell you more about how you can protect yourself next. Plus, rain chances are back in the forecast, mainly by Christmas. Those details coming up.